Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you today about is there an oncoming recession and the different aspects of it. This is the third time I've, I've started this video because and actually I, I did over an hour of video on it that I just, I can't, I can't, I don't feel safe. I don't feel like it's, it's the right video to load. Although it was all pertinent. It was a, it's a huge thing if you think about it in, in segments. Now, with this last recession that we went through, it was the toughest. And this doesn't have to be that kind of recession. The other recessions I went through was no big deal. I don't know how this one's going to turn out yet. Not sure at all. It could go so many different directions. And there's so many different hands inside of it that we just don't know yet. But this does have the precursors of the last recession. During the last recession, I was going gangbusters buying trucks beforehand. Well, I had bought three or four in the previous year, actually. And I was making great money, right? My trucks were all leased on at a percentage company. I wasn't running my authority like I had been in previous ones. But I, I was at, at, at CRST actually, doing really well. But I noticed around um, September or October of, of the previous year that the, the rates were dropping and the freight was getting scary, scarce. Now, these companies, they all have these giant pools of of freight setting in yards all over the place being stored on trailers we are now the we're not just truck drivers our companies are storage facilities for freight now when lehman brothers first hit and started going down that was a real good precursor of what was going on now fuel was also going up but that's, that wasn't a bad thing since I was at a carrier. It's hard not to get on to, off topic on this because there's so many different avenues to go in. The, fa the fact that I had substantial investments during this time was one of the things that helped me survive it. I had a huge money pool at my back because I had been saving money for a long time. Saving money is real important however you're saving it or making it or whatever on the sideline because these are sidelines but the second when Lehman tanked I held on to my stock and I had bought it at good prices and I always go back to Lehman because it's such a good a good precursor and then it did a little bounce thing right and I sold it on the bounce, and I ended up not losing very much money. Some, but not a, not a huge amount. Around December of, of 2008, or whatever year it was, 2009, um, I decided to go back into Lehman because it was at such a horrible low that I figured I could parlay what I had made and I did, right? So I stuck it back in there when it dropped down terribly low. And then a few months later, boy, they were, I was sweating bullets at, during this whole time, right? It jumped back up for a few days and I resold that profit. And there was a whole time frame I had to wait a specific amount of time before I could buy or sell or anything, right? So when I sold, I ended up making another really big cash cow off of Lehman's demise, actually. Maybe I should feel bad for that, but I don't think so. It was my money. I'm the one that's gambling it. Now, the precursors to these kind of recessions are, they work in a certain way, right? Like I said, you don't generally know if you're not keeping your fingers on the pulse of, of many different sectors that things are tanking. Now, if you're keeping your pulse on it, you can see what's coming ahead. You know, 
watching the price of oil. It can go up or down in a recession, but it will ultimately go back up, right? But you look at things like a little bit of hyperinflation going on. That's never good. And you want a steady economy. Otherwise, you have to ride the highs. Just like that, right? You skip. Skip the waves. And you and you keep keep going. But when you only look at certain things, like, oh my God, freight rates are so high, volume is up. If you've been looking at that for, you, for the last few years and going, everything is great. I've been looking at it for the last few years saying it's getting ready to tank. Because that's what it does. It, it, it inflates, and then it falls. Inflates and falls. And it's been inflated so high, so high, that's why I haven't run out and bought more trucks in the last few years. Buy at the low, sell at the high. And that's what I, how I always play that, right? I'll, buy, I'll end up buying, during, during a low, more trucks. I'll run them for a year, two years, whatever, right? If I see it, if I see the process leveling out, then that's fine. But then if it starts dipping again, then I'll sell them again. But recessions always have precursors. Like five or six months out from a recession, you'll have a dip. Like, or two years out, you'll have a big dip. And, and then you'll come back up. Everything can't stay high. And I know you may not understand that, but what I want you to do is do some Googling about precursors to recessions. I'm not going to sit here and read all this stuff to you. That would mean I would have to write. I'm not good at that. So if you, if you look up precursors to recessions, financial markets, look into the oil prices and, and what those things can do, because we're going into this recession. Now, it could pull back tomorrow and we could have a reprieve from it, a reprieve from it and not dip in so bad. But that's, that, that only means that the government is interacting with the economy in a way to try to alleviate things, which is technically bad. Um, if you look at Japan 20 year, 25 years ago, they had a recession. They've never came out of it because the government keeps their hands meddling in it. And that's, that's probably what will happen this time. Now, you can't set, you can't think that the gut, I heard someone say this the other day, if it gets any worse, well, it can't get any worse. It can get terribly worse. If we're down 38% right now in freight volume in the 1st of February, well, it was in January, middle, Feb, middle of January, all right, back up to Jan to September. In, in September, September, you are going into the strongest section of the year. Biggest sales, biggest everything, right? So September to the 15th of January should be the hottest and heaviest freight volume, rates, everything. This year, or I should say last year, however you want to play it, this time around, in September, Freight volumes and freight rates were already falling. They fell all through, we're now today's the 1st of February, 2019, and they're still falling. To, to an experienced person, this tells me that it's going to get worse. Unless tariffs are lifted, that could help it a little bit. We're, you're going, we're going to start seeing the failing of some businesses. Harley Davidson could be the one of the very first ones, which you think, oh, well, they're not huge. No, they are not, but they are publicly traded. Uh, they they have a lot of support worldwide. But Harley Davidson could be the first one hit, and they'll blame it on the tariffs. But it's just part of doing business. You don't gotta say, oh, it's because of this. It's a cycle. I predict Harley will go under and someone will snap them up at a deal or snap up their stock and, and reorganize the company. And then they'll start making some more affordable bikes because we all know Harley is terribly overpriced. As a motorcycle rider, I will tell you, they are terribly overpriced. Now, when they will be the first domino, 
what you also have to look for is other dominoes along the way. Now, they, they stress test the banks now. But after what happened in the last, last recession, I don't trust the stress tests because the banks are still carrying a huge amount of bad debt. Now, see, here's how I, I keep getting off topic. I'll explain bad debt to you. Back in the day, banks would not take give out loans on things that they considered to be bad debt. It was gambling. Somewhere along the way, they started leveraging bad loans. They could only leverage a certain amount. Then the government came in and said, hey, we have Bernie Mac loans or whatever they're called and Freddie Fay loans or whatever, right? So we'll let you carry this bad debt, but you have to carry what we consider, and those, those, de those debts are also considered bad debt, bad debt. So the government bundled these things and they, they gave them to the banks and they said, you have to carry this, uh, this amount. They're still doing that. None of that's changed. The total way that they're still doing business has not changed with the banking industry. Now, we have bubbles inside of bubbles inside of bubbles. Truck loans, given loans that maybe shouldn't be given out, given out housing loans that maybe shouldn't be given out because no one has the skin in the game, right? They can walk away. Um, the student debt loan problem is a huge bubble. If it was to pop tomorrow, it would you would see another huge recession, and that's that's just how it works. And that's something that could happen this time around. The student debt could be called, and it would, and it would it couldn't be paid, so it would just cause another big recession. Today, it's February the first, like I said, in let's say mid-March, somewhere in that time frame, all of these yards that have large stockpiles of trailers that are full of, of commodities, right? Those yards will probably be emptied out. If they don't have orders and money, then those trailers will not be refilled. Can you see what the recession is all about now? that if you're with a mega carrier and you're rolling up in there and picking up those loads, it's not a live load most of the time, it's because it's preloaded. That's great, right? Now, when, when we talk about running to mega carriers, this is where you're gonna have to play it tight during a recession. You may have to run to a mega carrier. And if you run to a mega carrier that pays a percentage and if you're getting their, their loads and not their logistics load, then you'll still get a good percentage. All right. Now, remember, these lots are full of stuff that's getting shipped. They're not reloading the trailers at the volume that they was pre-recession, right? So, at some point, don't be afraid to jump ship. If you're at that mega carrier getting a percentage and... They run out of freight, jump to a jump to a mileage contract. Secondly, right? But they're gonna those guys are gonna be at the same in the same position. If you've ever been leased on with their car carrier and you've been sitting there for three days and you're like, there ain't no load on the boards, if you can run boards, and most people do not know how to do that or cannot do it. If the company says, Well, we have a load for you, but don't load for three days, that's that's still their contractual freight that you're going to get a better rate on and unless their contract is up. So you're sitting there waiting and everybody gets angry. It's a very hard time for all of us to sit there and wait for these loads. But you can't always find anything. And we get, we're mad at them. They're trying to service their customers. Now where it really gets bad in, in these hard times, as things get harder, is that these mega carriers that have 5,000, 10,000 company drivers, and they have 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, whatever, lease operators, they may tell you it's first come, first serve, but I've seen it happen so many times. You're next up in, in line, and then they, they, they pull the load and give it to a company driver, 
or a lease operator or something like that. That's self-preservation. You got to expect that. So while this recession comes into play, you always constantly need to be searching and pecking for the next better deal. I'm not one to jump companies, but in, in this time frame, you might have to. That really helped me that I had so many trucks the last time around that I, I would send them out in different directions to different companies, you know. LTL carriers do better in a recession in a lot of ways because a lot of things they still pay full truckload on. Otherwise, they're selling pieces of your trailer. And that works pretty good. It's always worked real well for me. Like when I, I have my, my trailer and, I, and I, I sell the top deck and I, okay, you're going to pay me $4,000 from my top deck to take it from here to here. But I don't have to be there for X amount of days. And then I put something else to take on another 15 feet of deck space, right? I'm going to charge them full truckload for that. I'm not going to, I won't, some people charge much lower, but I don't. And I know that you, that this does not this is not going to affect me in any way. It would have to go on for a long time to affect me, but I know that it's going to affect a lot of you guys, and that really worries me. It's like going to a party, and everyone got drunk before they got to the party, and they got there and threw up. That's kind of how a recession plays because so many people jump in the game of whatever sector that they're in during the the party or before they get there. They get high on the, on the thought of it. And then when they get there and they realize that they're two hours late and they're sick and or whatever, the party's over. To ride a wave, you get you you start with the party before the party, ride it to the top. And it, everything in there, how you play that ride, is part of it. I was just reading some articles on on a bunch of other things in the in our sector, and it's it's it, this was forecasted. It was forecasted in our sector for a few more months down the road, where going into it way faster than anyone expected in the the big names in the sector the, the pieces the people that that have their fingers to our pulse I'll probably elaborate more on this next week or in a short period of time maybe give you a little history of the last recession what can pull you out of it is if fuel does jack up, and it's supposed to, that won't hurt. It'll, it'll kill you if you're running the spot market and you're not factoring that in. But if you're running for a company, um, lease to them or, or whatever, you'll do great because you slow down and you'll get that, that big money for the fuel surcharge. Everything is included in what you have to think about in this market. But I will keep saying it. Tighten your belt. Tighten your belt at home. And look for better options. Just keep your eyes open for the better option. You're going to find them options. <laughs>